prophecies and the end of a cycle. Now I would speak with you about something you have been contemplating from time to time. You have wondered, why does this Jeshua not speak of certain timelines and certain prophecies? Why does this Jeshua keep it very simple? Other entities will speak to you of great federations, and there are those. Others will speak to you of great plans for the future, sometimes dire plans, sometimes more hopeful plans. Others will speak to you of what you have to look out for and what may be coming. And they speak to you of a myriad of things because you are asking, you are inviting, wanting to know all the dramas, all of the ideas. It is the same as when you watch your movies, the same as when you turn on your television sets and you tune into certain programs. You want to know stories. And so there are plenty of entities, plenty of channels that bring you the stories so that you can play with them, so that you can be excited one way or another by what they are telling you. And you have wondered, why is there not prophecy from this Jeshua? Well, I have tried that from time to time, and you acknowledge that my timing is not your timing. It is because, truly, as we have spoken many times, you are the creators of your reality, the creators of what you experience, and there is always that little bit of improv that you throw in from time to time. I do not want to come and give you fanciful stories. I know that you want them. I know that you enjoy them. And I also know that there are many sources that will give them to you. I speak to you from time to time about concepts to show you how they can be clues to what you truly want to remember. But the stories and the concepts are just that. They are stories, they are concepts, and they stay within the mind. The mind plays with them and has great fun. And as you have seen in this reality, you can find one story, one concept, and then you read another book and you go to another website and you will find something opposite. And you wonder, well, if this one is true or is that one true, which is it? What is going to be happening? I wish someone would tell me, I have heard you say that. Truly, no one can tell you except yourself, since the truth is based on what you are believing and what you are working towards in your own belief system. I have said to you many times that your so-called future is predicated upon your past as to what you believe your past has been, and what you usually do is to extend the past into the future. Now, if you have had a past you believe to be negative, abusive, hard, a struggle, and all of you have known lifetimes like that, then there is a proclivity to look towards the future and to say that the future is going to be a struggle. If you have a remembrance of love and of being in harmony, resonance with other ones, then you tend to bring that forward out of your past and project it into the future. But it is all mental, subconscious though it may be at that point. What I speak to you of is the heart. That is why I call you the heart family, because you are of the heart. You play with the mind, you have fun with the mind. The mind will give you all sorts of things to play with. But the mind truly is the servant of the heart. And as you will remember to dwell in the heart, in the place of love, in the place that does not have to understand mentally what love is, but knows it, feels it, and abides in peace, then the mind will set about allowing you to manifest peace, love, and harmony, and trust. Go first to the heart. Go to the place of beholder and love. Then allow the mind to work what is best for the soul's purpose and the heart's purpose. Play with the mind as much as you want to. You have created it so that you can play with it, the same as you would play with any of the puzzles that make for yourself or the games that you make. Play with it if you want to. But remember always that everything comes from the place of the heart. That is where your power lies. Now, within the mental concepts are truth, lowercase t, and there is the concept that is being widely accepted among you, that those in your grouping of shared belief system that says that the year 2012 is going to be a moment this year, and you should get your ducks in order right now. You have been wondering, what more can I do? How can I get my ducks in order when I don't even know where my ducks are? Or how many might I have? So you do a lot of mental gymnastics about the year 2012. Now there is a thread of truth that runs through this prophecy because the year 2012 is going to be an advantageous year. But it is not going to be the end of everything. It is going to be part of the process that you are already in. And there will be an extended time from the year 2012 from what you would call another five decades after that of knowing that is being already built. The remembrance of your own divinity, of your power, of where you have come and why you have come. It has all been in process and the year 2012 is going to be an advantageous year because many who are in this grouping of belief system are going to be expecting it and that which you expect has power, power to manifest. 
It is not going to be a cataclysmic to the point where it is going to be the end of our Holy Mother Earth. It is not going to be the end of this reality. It is going to be an evolutionary process that grows forward and will extend for a good period of time as it grows and evolves upon itself. You have already set the building blocks in place, and you are going to keep on building. What you will see is a growing awareness within yourself, because you have prayed for this, you have asked for this, you have been preparing for this. There is going to be a growing awareness with the friends and co-workers, and the ones who will not even use the same terminology that you use of their purpose. Many have wondered and are wondering why they are here. They also wonder why they struggle. They wonder, am I just here for a short period of time, and is all there is? Is this just one lifetime? As is so often put forward in your religious, philosophical threads of thinking, that there is just one lifetime, and there cannot be the reincarnation, the remaking of realities. So they are questioning, how do I make the most of this one lifetime? To introduce to them an idea that perhaps life is ongoing is a bit of an evolutionary leap for them. And yet they are asking to know this, and you are coming into your own power of remembering that you have been here many, many times, and that you have choice always whether to return to this reality or any other reality on Holy Mother Earth, or to go to another constellation or galaxy to adventure in other forms and other ways. As you remember that you have choice, you begin to feel in the heart the expansion of divinity that is you. After the time period that you call 2012, there is going to be yet a progression of challenges for humankind. But there is also going to be a progression of understanding that the challenges are not so much negative as they are gifts. It will be a process which will build exponentially upon itself, very much the same as the seed that opens up and comes through the ground. And then the plant reaches out and will extend a leaf, and then another leaf, and then another leaf, and then a flower, and then fruit. You are going to be part of it because you are adding your energy to it. You are going to understand what is going on at a very deep level. At the same time, you are going to be taking part in what seems to be the world level, but from a different perspective. You have manifested this human lifetime so that you could be part of an awakening. There is a cycle, an evolutionary cycle from a place that remembers its divinity, knows that it is creating, into that place where it identifies with whatever is being created and identifies with that creation to the place where it is forgotten temporarily who is doing the creating. And then there is the process where you are now, of awakening to realizing, I am the one who is creating. And then the realization that, if I am creating, I can change whatever I see happening. And how do you change that? You change it by changing your perception. You have the power at any moment to change your perception of what is going on. No one else can change your perception except you. You have great power because you can change it. No one can take that from you. You are the one who holds the power of perception and of belief. And that is why, when you come to the year 2012, there is going to be a gathering, a celebration if you will, which you are already planning at a deep level. The year 2012 is going to be part of an ongoing process of the evolution of awakening. The cycle itself is going to extend past that date. Every concept that is given to you, every prophecy, every message carries a thread of truth with it. It depends on how you perceive the truth. And I am saying to you, why would you not want to perceive it as good? You have done the suffering already. You have been there, done that. I have been there, done a bit of it, finished with it, completed as you can be and as you are complete. Dream big dreams. Go for it. Allow the dream and the heart to be big, and then allow the mind to figure out how to do it in the world. Do not worry about all the small details. The mind is going to take care of that. The mind is going to chew on all the details like a dog chews on a bone. The mind will be very busy to comes up with the suggestions as how to do the big dream of the heart. Take a moment now. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, what is my dream, if I could have, if I could do, if I could be anything that I want to be or do or have, what would it be? What would I do? Who would I be? How would I be? What is my dream? Allow that feeling to stay with you. This evening, when you put the head upon the pillow, go back to that feeling of, what do I want in my life? How do I want it to be? How do I want to be in my life? What is my greatest desire? Then live from that space as it could be true, because it can. You are the one who can make it happen. The energy of other people that you want to join with, you're going to be there as well. I know it. I feel it. I share my dream. 
my idea with this other person and persons, I share with myself, all the aspects of myself, and I feel so uplifted, so excited that I can't wait to talk about it to the other ones. You get together and you are extremely positive about what can be, what you can put together, and you live in the space of possibility, unlimited possibility, and it feels so good. And the reason that it feels so good is because it is true. You are not limited. When you get in the space of excitement and you are talking with another one about what you truly want to do and they say, yes, you can do that, I'll join you, let's do such and such, you are uplifted out of the world's concern and struggle and you live in a divine space. It gives you the feeling that you can do anything. Many of you have felt stuck. You have felt that you had to do such and such because that is what the world expected you to do. You had to earn the golden coin. You had to stay in a certain occupation. You had to go here, go there. Whenever you are thinking about something that you have to do and you get the feeling it resonates in the body, it often is right in the solar plex and you feel like you could throw it up. Why do you feel perhaps nauseous at that point? It is because you truly want, at the soul level, to throw it out and get rid of it and sometimes you physically do that. But when you are living in the space of excitement, of planning unlimited possibility of what you can do and how you can do them and you say, yes, I can do that. You say yes to your divine power, and everything else has to fall in place, even if separated ego questions your every decision. Now, you do need to, there is a caveat here, you do need to look at what you might be rebelling against and understand the issues of why maybe you do not feel exactly happy where you are, and why you might want to change it all. Maybe there are issues that need to be looked at and seen with new perspective, to be seen in holiness, to be seen as blessed so that you do not have to throw it all out, but you can change some of the parts of it. And you can change some of the parts of it without moving from your chair, because you can change how you look at it. And then sometimes you will make a physical change. When you live in the place of excitement, you call in all your angels, your guides, all the unseen ones who are always around you. But you do not always hear them, because you are too focused on what is wrong, or what might be wrong, or whatever issue might come up. When you are in the place of excitement, you have an opening of energy. You are opening to receiving help, assistance from the higher realms. And then what you are planning to do is given more impetus to move forward. Now, I have said to you many times that you do nothing alone. You may think that you have to make all the decisions yourself. You may think that you are doing it all by yourself, and that is truly heavy to have to decide something. But truly, you do not have anything alone. Your guides and teachers and angels are always working with you. The wise masters with whom you have walked the face of our Holy Mother the Earth in physical form in other lifetimes are there to be called upon, as sometimes you have spent the in-between lifetimes being their angels or their guide. Share your dream, your biggest dream, with others who you know are going to be in a receptive, supportive space. Share with others who will say, Yes, I believe that for you. I know that to be true. I know you can do that. Share that feeling of power and know that truly any time you want to call on that power, it is right there within you. It is what I have spoken of as the heart, the simplicity of the heart, not having to worry about all the other details. You allow the mind to play with those, but you abide in the heart, that place of great power, that place of expansion. Then separated ego will run on stage and say, but master, what about, how can we do this? They say, I can't do this, I'm too old to do this. Well, you are never too old as long as you draw breath. You are never too old even if the body has come to a place where it does not move with all the flexibility that you used to know. Even if the body has to be in a prone position does not move. Even if the body is in one of your wheelchairs and does not move except as someone else perhaps helps it. As long as you draw breath, you have power to live in that expanded state of excitement about making your dream manifest. So you see, you have no excuses. As long as you draw breath, you are alive. And as long as you are living in this incarnation, you can do anything. As long as you draw breath, you are in a place of unlimited possibilities. Let no one tell you what your truth is. Another one can tell you what their truth is, what their perception is, what their perspective is, but it does not have to be yours, and many times it is not yours. Let no one tell you what your truth has to be, because you are the maker of your truth moment by moment. So you can make your life anything you want it to be, any how you want it to be. You are approaching the end of a cycle of energy where you have gone from knowing the divinity into the most dense of densities, 
and then you have come to a place where there was a questioning, a clue that perhaps there is more than just what you have termed the Dark Ages. Perhaps there is more than just existence. Perhaps you began questioning. You are now on the upward swing, closing in on what I have called the apogee, the top of the cycle. Many of you will feel the energy expanding and the awareness of divinity and the awakening. You will feel it within the heart and you will know it to be true, even if others would question it. The end of the cycle is approaching. It is not here just yet, because you have not declared that you want it right now. You want to go through a process. You have agreed to the process of time. So, therefore, you will celebrate the year 2012. You will celebrate the year 2013, 2014, and 2015 until you come to a certain place where there is an ending of a cycle for many. Not for all, because there are some who have yet have a feeling that there is more to experience in the human plane. More of the drama that they want to experience, so they will stay in this reality, but you will not. You will have finished the cycle, and you will be looking around to see. Now what can I play with? Where can I go? What can I create? Because the Creative One, capital O, expresses itself in myriad forms and places and realities, and the Creative One is forever creating and expanding and will forever, beyond time itself, experience and express itself in new ways. That is what creation is all about. It is about coming up with new ideas. It is about coming up with new creation and sometimes getting drawn into those creations to a place where there is the cycle again of the density and the awakening. You are very much closing in on the end of the cycle, of this cycle. Celebrate, dream the dreams, and share with others the excitement of possibilities. 